Lay out all parts in a logical fashion using the schematic as a guide. Open the service kit and identify each replacement part. One by one, match each used part with its equivalent from the service kit and remove all old parts from the work surface. Thus, at the end of service, no extra parts should remain. Install lightly lubricated O-rings on the shaft of the shuttle valve. Excess lubricant will serve only to attract grit. Firmly press the low pressure seat into the end of the shuttle valve. Confirm that it fits flush with no gaps. Before building the shuttle valve assembly, confirm that the counterbalance cylinder seals to the shuttle valve. Add the cylinder without the spring. Then, sealing the hole in the low pressure seat to a polished surface, tap the counterbalance cylinder. The counterbalance cylinder should bounce back confirming a seal and proper O-ring function. Now add the spring and counterbalance cylinder and set the assembly aside. Install a lightly lubricated O-ring in the land on the valve spindle. Using the pinch technique will nurse the O-ring over the edges of the land. Now install an O-ring in the land in the end of the valve spindle and confirm that it is fully seated. Add the O-ring to the orifice, taking care to protect the knife edge. Do not catch the O-ring on the sharp edges of the orifice adjusting slot. Making sure to avoid contact between the knife edge and the valve spindle, carefully push the orifice into the threaded end. Using a slotted orifice adjuster or your inline adjuster, push the orifice into the valve spindle. Now thread the orifice in three complete turns. Although the manual addresses lever installation after shuttle valve insertion, consider an alternative technique to decrease the risk of bending the lever legs or damaging the shuttle valve. If the lever was retained during disassembly as shown in the disassembly video, thread the zip tie from the service kit between the lever leg and the valve spindle. Form a large bow and thread the zip tie down the other side. Hold the lever flat and slide the zip tie against the feet of the lever, spreading the legs slightly. Orient the shuttle valve assembly so that the step in the shuttle valve is aligned with the small square brooch and lever feet. You will feel slight resistance as the low pressure seat passes the feet of the lever. The assembly will then come to a stop when the step reaches the lever feet. Now remove the zip tie. Using a dowel, push on the counterbalance cylinder. The lever should rise and you should feel pressure on the dowel as you activate the lever. Add a lightly lubricated o-ring to the end of the adjusting screw. Carefully add an o-ring to the shaft of the adjusting spring. This o-ring is quite delicate. Add the o-ring to the top of the adjusting spring. Carefully insert the adjusting spring into the screw, and when the shaft is safely in the bore, pop the part into the screw past the resistance of its O-ring. Avoid cross-threading of the fine threads by initially turning counterclockwise until a tiny click is felt. Now, screw the adjusting spring in until the tip protrudes one half millimeter only from the end of the adjusting screw. Lubricate the adjusting screw threads. Insert the screw and note the rise of the lever. 
When the threads engage, screw the adjusting screw in until the pinhole is completely clear. Now add an additional half turn to safely clear the adjusting screw. With the pinhole clear and the valve spindle braced against a firm surface, insert the pin and push it into place with a flat tool. Aligning the pin may be accomplished with a thin steel pick or a tiny hex key as you apply firm pressure to guide the pin into the far hole. Once the pin end is engaged, again brace the valve spindle on a firm surface and use a heavy tool to bring the pin through to the other side. Ensure that the spring pin is centered. This is important. Now unscrew the adjusting screw until it stops to minimize spring tension on the shuttle valve. Do not insert the rubber cap until after tuning. Place a lightly lubricated O-ring on the Venturi lever. Ensure that it is fully seated. Slide the lever onto the valve spindle and keeping control of the lever, check to see that the pin is centered. If the pin was not centered, one end will catch the venturi level and it will not slide past the pin. Pull it towards the adjusting screw until it seats. Now rotate the venturi lever until the air outlet is unobstructed and there is no impairment of lever action. Holding the valve spindle assembly by the adjusting screw, slide it into the case, once again controlling the lever. Do not allow the lever to jump as it enters the case. Ensure that the venturi lever passes into its notch and that the flats on the valve spindle pass smoothly between the lugs on the inside of the case. Seat the valve spindle until it is flush against the inside of the case. Add the O-ring to the threaded end of the valve spindle. Spin the retaining nut on with the hex flat outermost. Using an 11 16 inch wrench, carefully tighten the retaining nut. Do not over tighten the nut as you may rotate the valve spindle in the case, permanently deforming the lugs that keep the lever vertical. After tightening, inspect the lever tips against the rim of the case to confirm that they remain vertical with no tilt. If the valve spindle has rotated, the lugs have been deformed and the case will need to be replaced. Blow in the hose end of the valve spindle with your mouth and confirm that there is a leak. If there is no leak, depress the lever and unscrew the orifice one half turn and try again. With the valve leaking, depress the lever and screw the orifice clockwise one quarter turn at a time and recheck the seal by blowing in the threaded end. Repeat this as needed until the valve seals to breath pressure. This is a preliminary orifice position which ensures that the valve will still leak slightly when full intermediate pressure is applied during tuning. With the orifice in its preliminary position, examine the tips of the lever. They should protrude approximately 2 to 4 millimeters above the case rim. If the lever is lower than this, consult the Tips and Tricks document available on the Dive Gear Express website for troubleshooting. You may wish to wait to install the diaphragm until the regulator has been pressurized to confirm optimum lever height. The manual presumes familiarity with the relationship between orifice position and lever height. Adequate lever height is critical to dive safety. With the orifice tuned to seal to breath pressure, connect 
the second stage to a tuned first stage, supplying an intermediate pressure of 125 to 145 PSI using an inline adjuster with a slotted end. Ensure that the adjusting screw is fully counterclockwise. Now engage the inline adjuster in the slot in the orifice. Pressurize the system, and while the valve is leaking, slowly turn the orifice with the inline adjuster until the valve just seals. Since the valve was leaking, there was no risk of cutting the soft low pressure seat. It is now important, however, to press lightly on the lever to lift the seat from the orifice to avoid cutting the seat during further adjustments. With the valve just sealed to intermediate pressure, let us now examine lever height. The lever typically drops one millimeter when pressurized. The lever should be no lower than the case rim. If the lever is lower than this, again, consult the tips and tricks document for troubleshooting. We must now account for the height of the lever underneath the diaphragm inside the case. If the diaphragm was replaced due to damage, install the disc into the new diaphragm by gently stretching the center hole and sliding the skirt into the groove in the disc. Now examine the disc and diaphragm for folds and symmetry. Install the diaphragm and use a wooden dowel to ensure that the rim is fully seated at the edge of the case. Add the diaphragm cover. Because of the protrusion of the purge button mechanism, the cover will depress the disc of the regulator as it is lowered into place. This will open the valve. With the valve again leaking, now gradually screw in the orifice until the valve once again seals to intermediate pressure. You are lowering the lever just enough to fit below the purge button. We now see that the maximum permissible height of the lever is perhaps a half a millimeter above the rim. Again, this just seals the valve under the cover, but it does not account for seat set. We will now add one twelfth of a turn more to account for the groove that the knife edge presses into the seat during storage, again called seat set. After this, however, only one more additional one twelfth turn may be added during tuning without causing lever drop. All other adjustments are made with the adjusting spring. You can see that this one twelfth turn dropped the lever only zero to a half a millimeter. Lever drop increases after this, so again, only one more adjustment is permitted in tuning. If the lever is below the rim, consult tips and tricks. We'll now continue with assembly. Add the diaphragm, carefully seating the rim. Add the diaphragm cover, and now the cover assembly. The notch in the case cover must be matched to the tab in the cover. Mate them together and avoid cross-threading by unscrewing the cover assembly until you feel the click of the first thread dropping into place. Then tighten. We will now tune the regulator. Once again, Pressurize the second stage on a working first stage supplying 125 to 145 PSI. The valve should be sealed with no audible leak. Using a water manometer or magnahelic, measure the suction required to just open the valve as indicated by a drop in intermediate pressure from the first stage. The magnahelic value at that moment is your cracking effort. If the initial cracking effort is lower than 0.9 inches, you may add that one more 30 degree turn to the orifice. Again, no more than that is permitted to avoid a dangerous lever drop. If this low cracking effort is found, disconnect the hose and inserting an orifice adjuster, add one 1 12th turn, 30 degrees or five minutes on a clock face to the orifice.
Once again, measure the cracking effort. With the cracking effort above 0.9 inches, no further orifice adjustments are made. Specification cracking effort for this second stage is 1.0 to 1.2 inches. To obtain your desired cracking effort, confirm that the adjusting screw is fully counterclockwise. Then, using a 5 mm hex key, turn the adjusting spring clockwise until the desired cracking effort is obtained. Cracking effort rises less than one tenth of an inch with each quarter turn. We now see a cracking effort of 1.1 inches. With a specification cracking effort between 1.0 and 1.2 inches, this regulator is within specification and tuning is complete. If instead initial cracking effort is above specification, the opposite is required. Checking first that the adjusting screw is fully out, use your 5 mm hex key to reduce cracking effort. With this value fully 0.4 inches above desired, one and one quarter turns are removed. This brings us to our desired value. Depressurize the system, then repressurize to confirm that your cracking effort remains as adjusted. With the reg at 1.1 inches as desired, we will now complete assembly. Press the rubber cap firmly into the end of the adjusting screw. Confirm that its edges are flush with the knob. Carefully inserting both tabs into the slots on the left side, ensure that the cover is properly aligned. Then press firmly on the right edge of the cover until the locking tab clicks closed. Install the mouthpiece by stretching it carefully over the mouth tube and checking alignment. Secure it with a zip tie. Ensuring that the tie is in the groove of the mouthpiece and that it doesn't shift position as it is tightened. Snip the excess with side biting shears. And make any final adjustments by pressing on the square zip tie lock. This completes assembly and tuning of the Gears Extra second stage. Dive Gear Express videos are made available for educational purposes only to provide general understanding of scuba diving related topics and not to provide specific advice. Please read the essential information page at the URL shown.